Hello and welcome to The Hearing. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And before we get started, um, just a little bit of uh, front matter. First off, you mentioned Oysterhead back when we reviewed um, Claypool Lennon. Yes, it did. Thank you. Thank you. I checked him out. <laughs> Fucking love it. I bought the album. Cool. Um, had an interesting thought, though, while I was listening to it. Because, you know, I, I gushed about Copeland and, and Claypool many mm-hmm. times. Atranastasio, brilliant player, but he's kind of the one I'm the least fanboyish about. Oh, yeah. So I had a thought. Imagine if he was replaced. I'm going to replace him with two people, and I just want you to ponder what this would lead to. All right. Re- replace him with Annie Clark, a.k.a. St. Vincent. Yeah. And John McRae. Oh, wow. <laughs> They'd last for about six months before they co- imploded under the weight of McRae and Copeland's egos. <laughs> <laughs> But the music would be incredible, and the yes, side pro- and the side project that Claypool and and Annie Clark did on the side, you know, while the other two were at each other's throats, would be brilliant as well. Of um, course. Also, had an interesting thought about Primus, and I can't be the only person who said this. They really are the spiritual successors of Rush. Hmm. Three great musicians who all like to show off, all showing off at the same time. A, a vocal, an unconventional vocalist who also plays bass, yeah. and lyrics about shit that nobody else writes lyrics about. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of why I was surprised you didn't like uh, the delirium, but uh... it's just a bit too conventional. I was expecting more Primus. I was expecting Oysterhead, honestly. You mm. know, something just weird and bizarre. But I mean, Oysterhead is also Copeland, who you know. Anyway, I've said enough about that. Yeah. Anyway, without further ado, on to this week's album, which is from 2014. Kenny Dennis 3 by Serengeti. David Cohn, better named by his, known by his stage name uh, Serengeti, is an American rapper from Chicago, Illinois, which explains why you heard about him long before I did. <laughs> I actually heard about him from Open Mike Eagle. Like, he okay, references I'll, them, he works with them. I'll be and, getting to that. Um, funny you mentioned that. This is the first Serengeti album I ever listened to, so I did not oh. hear Dennehy before this. Okay. I This is my um, introduction to Kenny Dennis, and I'm like... I'll, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do a little more introduction before I get into my introduction. Okay. Um, but I introduced well, my introduction to that, to Serengeti. Um, he's the great nephew of jazz trumpeter, Sonny Cohn, and he attended Southern Illinois university Carbondale, where he became friends with open Mike Eagle. Um, Serengeti's music is a sharp departure from most mainstream hip hop, which he considers quote depressing and always ha- always consists of quote, the same redundant ideas. <laughs> Um, Kenny Dennis 3 is the third or fourth part of the (laughs) Kenny Dennis saga. Um, Kenny Dennis is a character that Serengeti created for a a series of albums, um, which started with um, a few songs on the album, Dennehy. Um, In an interview, uh, Serengeti said that he created Dennehy Dennehy as an answer to common complaints about hip hop and to put the fun back in hip hop. Um, (laughs) My introduction to to Serengeti and Kenny Dennis was when we were reviewing, shortly after we reviewed Silverado on Zombie Takeout, you quoted favorite actor Dennehy, (laughs) and I knew it had to be a reference to something. I didn't know what, so I Googled it. I Googled that exact phrase, and I found this, and you had mentioned Serengeti off and on here and there, and Kenny Dennis, so I found the song. I was not fond of that song at first. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, at first blush, the song kind of sounded like he was biting too much from Beastie Boys. There um, is a big Beastie Boys influence oh, in, yeah. in him, definitely, especially on that first that that Dennehy album in '06. Uh-huh. I think he even samples them. <laughs> uh-huh. Back to the album. Kenny Dennis Three was released on November 11th, 2014, on Joyful Noise Recordings, produced by Odd Mostum. And features uh, Serengeti on vocals, Joji Kojima, uh, vocals on tracks 2, 3, 11, 12, and 18. More on Joji Kojima later. Um, Anders Holm, vocals on tracks 4, 6, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16. More on Anders Holm later. Um, <laughs> Jill, drums on track 12, vocals on tracks 13 and 16, turntables. D.A. Fisher, guitar on track 12, and Robert Fisher, cello on track 19. 
Reminder, I don't edit any songs into our episodes for copyright reasons, but down in the description, if you're listening to this on YouTube or on our blog at John and Scotto, if you're listening to the audio podcast, you'll find links to Kenny Dennis 3 on Spotify and YouTube, so you can follow along if you'd like. On to track one, No Beginner. This is the full Kenny Dennis. <laughs> and the thing I have grown to love about Kenny Dennis, and largely through this album, is how he his raps are just manic and really yes. off time. Yes, it's insane. Um, but anyway, the, the the lead up to this, I guess we should start with that. Actually, yes, yes. We have the we have the introduction uh, to Kenny Dennis on Dennehy. Uh, mm. it, it's and he's just like, kind of random suburban guy, right? Well, he's he's pretty much the Chris Farley. Yeah, you know, yes. Bears guy. The Bears. That, that's that yeah. is where he starts off at. Yeah. He's got his wife Jules, who, who who's always asking him to get stuff when he's at the store, and he's kind of feeling a little henpecked, even though she doesn't seem to be henpecking him all that much. <laughs> but if you take the city out of the equation, I mean, he is very Chicago. But if you take yes. the city out of the equation, he is a random middle aged suburban guy. And I think that that's a point, though. There are a lot of dudes that live in this city. That uh-huh. pretty much treat it like a suburb. I mean, okay, yeah. uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. That I say suburban in my notes, and I just said it now. But obviously, Chicago is a city, so it's. It, but he is having lived in the suburbs my whole life. He is suburban guy. Right, right. And I think that's you know that's always my fear listening to this is am I Kenny Dennis and I'm just don't have <laughs> the awareness to know that because I I think a lot of this theme running through all of these albums, despite all of the insane things that happen here, Uh I I always feel the theme is self-awareness and and knowing like who you really are and, and, and what you should be doing and, and just how to react to things. But anyway, Kenny Dennis has on, at least on this album, none of that. (laughs) Oh yeah. This is where it, this is him. This whole album is him destroying his life, Uh pushing everyone away. Right. It's 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 this downward spiral that mm-hmm. that he does in this album. So well, the first that's... album, he's just it's just a normal happy you know marriage between him uh-huh. and Jules. Uh, the second one, uh, the EP, I think they flesh it out a little bit more. I think that's the one where they introduce. Well, he talks about his mom a little bit, and you know, he uh-huh. uh, his brother Tanya. Um, I think yeah, that, that took me a minute to get my head around. <laughs> well, right, because I'm not I'm not woke enough to know if they've had the pronouns right, honestly. But okay, well, because the the pronoun was definitely he. I was listening yes. for that because I wanted to make sure there wasn't you know they, they they weren't messing with pronouns a little bit, and I was confused by stuff like he definitely right. says he. Tanya's a he. <laughs> so he's 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 a lady boy is what he officially you know references him uh-huh. as. Uh, now, Tanya could be a trans man who didn't change their name. Right. That's... So then uh, Kenny Dennis, they also have, um, he does like a rap battle with some other, you know, someone named Lee. <laughs> and um, th- they introduce on, I think, the EP that he was in, because then the question then becomes, why does this, you know, middle-aged, you know, suburban city mm-hmm. guy you know, that wears Zubas, hmm. why is he a rapper? And right. he comes up with this backstory of, you know, he was in this gangster rap band called The Grim Teaches in the 90s. Oh, okay. And that's referenced throughout this album, too. Uh-huh. Uh, it's it's referenced throughout the thing, because it's it was his claim to fame. Right. He, he somehow gets into this weird feud between Shaq... <laughs> Okay, there was a reference to Shaq on the last track. I was wondering about right. that. The way he tells a story is he will spew out all of these different references, uh-huh. not explain all of them. Sometimes they're explained in the past. Sometimes they're explained two albums okay. from now. And you're just like, oh, wait a minute. He was referencing this all the way back. That like, I, so, he's, years- so, you know, to use an overused reference, um, Serengeti was basically playing three-dimensional chess the whole time. He yes. had everything planned. Okay. Like like he mentions this Tom Selleck guy a couple <laughs> times on this record and I think it went right over my head until like a couple albums later he explains, you know, that's the guy Jules leaves him for. Okay. 
<laughs> and she's and he's her agent too. But that's uh-huh. a, that's that's a different story. We'll get to the lead up and then <laughs> and then we'll do like I'll do the the yeah. post albums after we've reviewed the album. What happens um, next? But all of those random references that he drops, even if you know I don't understand them because this outside of Dennehy, this is the only Serengeti that I've heard. Well, the only Kenny Dennis that I've heard. I checked out some of his stuff, his non Kenny Dennis stuff. I really like it. Um, well, yeah, the but, same year this album he did um, Sisyphus with uh, Sufjan Stevens uh, and Son Lux. He's very interesting. Um, I, I, I mean, we, you know, last week we talked about Quest being Trap Called Quest being the alternative hip hop. Serengeti is absolutely alternative hip hop. Yeah, um, but, this is a cross between Herman Melville and Andy Kaufman, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I say Andy but, Kaufman because if you ever do his Instagram lives, he's on in character. I shit oh, wow. you not. <laughs> yeah, I, I can believe it. Um, but the thing about all of those references, even if you don't get them, you know, get what they're pointing to in the story, they create a character. Yes. They tell you who this guy is. There is a Club Med reference in this song. <laughs> when was the last time you thought about Club Med? The, As the, children of the 80s, like, I haven't thought about Club Med or heard anything about Club Med since the early 90s. And I'm willing to bet that Serengeti is probably a good deal younger than us. He's a little younger. Not much, I don't think. Oh, okay. He's a He's little his... younger. Okay. Because like you know, his... him and Open Mike okay. Eagle are the same age. And, and okay. yeah, I think they're oh. I think they're just a couple of years younger than we are, honestly. Oh, shit. Okay. I thought he was young. Okay. That explains a lot then. I mean, um, he's been rapping since 06, at least, you know, right, that's when right. Daddy came um, out. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the sample is in this song, but I love it. I could not find the listings for the samples. Um, Me neither. And yeah, he's very, he manipulates a lot of his samples. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you can't tell right. what it is originally for the which most honestly, part. Which honestly is what you should be doing. Yeah. Yeah, totally. You need um, to make them hidden, make them unrecognizable. You should credit them. I'm, a, I'm sure he credits them somewhere on the album. But, you know, I couldn't find it on Wikipedia. Um, but I just love how everything just goes off the rails timing lot wise. <laughs> it just adds this great panicked urgency. And I think one last thing about the build up here is on the last album, we um, we were introduced to Anders uh, Holmes uh-huh. uh, um, char- character who um, yeah. that he, he begins with how they met when he was a kid and mm-hmm. uh Kenny Dennis is arguing over a return at sharper image that he gives it. He just gives to him since he can't get like store credit back for it. Right. And then uh, he goes out to LA to visit him. And uh, it, I think I referenced this, the Hunter tapes and stuff, but he's kind of a jerk to him too. And winds up just uh-huh. storming okay. off right before uh, D's is about to give him this big surprise where he gets to meet like Michael Dudikoff and, Oh, and <laughs> an American gladiator or whatever too and um, As a, I think I'm just gonna I, again I haven't heard, I've only heard this part but I'm gonna go on a limb and say if you're not a child of the 80s about half of the Kenny Dennis stuff, stuff is lost on you I, I, yeah there's a lot of really weird references <laughs> I don't think anyone born after 78 maybe knows who Michael Dudikoff is he, he mentions the negotiator by the way the movie the negotiator yeah. I don't know how many times uh-huh. without I, the, I, the series actually he talks yeah. about that movie good movie I mean I hate to plug a Kevin Spacey movie at this point but it's good movie <laughs> and um the, the whole thing with Dennehy though is yes it, it it isn't exactly flattering to Dennehy because the next line is favorite drink O'Doul's. I love that part. <laughs> O'Doul's is a non-alcoholic beer. Now, I like the taste of beer. You don't. We disagree on that. You've referred to it as wheat soda, which yes. is accurate. Yeah. But the, even I wouldn't drink O'Doul's. And, and, I, and I enjoy the taste of beer. And on the, the Dennehy tracks, he, he does get very technical about O'Doul's, about which mm-hmm. type he prefers, oh, and about the, the history of the process. Yeah, it it's insane. So only one thing would be more disturbing than that is in, is was if he did had the same rant about Zima. So le- so leading up to this, we've got all of that. Uh, and remember, there is a Grim Teaches album out there that you could listen to. Oh God! There is there is also a Perfecto EP out there too. <laughs> okay, again, this is my first introduction to Serengeti, but I need to listen to more because this guy is clearly fucking brilliant. <laughs> and and it's very detailed. Like, 
that there's a 17 minute track at the end of the EP about oh the guy. It's a spoken word thing from the guy who sold him the beats and his this long ass story about him trying to write the great American novel while he was at his day job. It's called The Labrador. Quite, quite some time ago, I went on this spiel at the beginning, beginning of a hearing episode about how prog exists in other genres. It's not just prog rock. I couldn't think of, I think I named Chesky as prog hip hop at the time. Yeah. This guy is prog hip hop. Yeah, he's, he's completely on another level. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, I mean, I learned, I found Chesky because Chesky opened for him. Okay, okay. That's how that's um, how I learned about Chesky because it was just kind of this going to Lincoln Hall. You know, uh-huh. I'm the, I'm this you know old the oldest man there pretty much. It's really <laughs> funny. But, so I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just like, but I'm really into this. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, back to the album track yes. two. Yes, on no. off. Again, love the sample. Love the guitar riff that's on it. Um. And and what I have here, admittedly, you know, I think about the character. He perfectly captures middle-aged suburban angst. Well, right. Uh, this song is pretty. I. It took me a long time to figure out. This song is all about him not wanting to talk about not only the bad things in Chicago, mm-hmm. but the bad things that are going on in his life. Right. Of course. Because well, um, he's. That's the genius of this character. Is he's a caricature but he gets so real at points because it is very much about toxic masculinity and stuffing things down. I, I've always compared Serengeti to Herman Melville with this because you mm-hmm. are at the mercy of the narrator. Yeah. You know, thank yeah. God he brings in other characters to tell us right. what's really um, fucking going on. Cause we'd kind of be lost without them. Having said all that, I got to say, and I don't know if you'll get this reference, but Kenny Dennis reminds me a lot of Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Did you ever I, watch Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Uh, not really. There's this, this, the one human character on the show is their neighbor, Carl. I was going to say, Mid- it's not the milkshake. No, it's their neighbor, the one human. Middle-aged, balding guy, lives in his Barco lounger. Um, I think he does have a Chicago accent. I'm not sure. Um, but Kenny <laughs> Dennis reminds me a lot of him. Um, I think, you know, re- redeeming something I said last week, the guitar riff does go on a bit too long, gets a little annoying. Um, then it switches to Japanese and Joji Kojima comes in. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure the deal is with Joji. Joji, uh... Joji, I looked him up. Joji Kojima is a, an accessories and jewelry designer. Very successful. He designed this chainmail chain mail mask that Lady Gaga wore at a show once or through an appearance. So he's a very successful accessories and jewelry designer who apparently also likes to rap. And he's on a couple of um, – <laughs> his only music credit are a couple of um, Serengeti – Kenny Dennis albums. Serengeti, Kenny Dennis That album. is really weird because I don't remember him in the earlier ones. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was kind of confusing about this when you put the story together because mm-hmm. the first track from right from the beginning – He's obviously alone. Yeah. Because no married guy would have a hot dog for lunch and a hot right. dog for dinner. <laughs> right, exactly. That is a dude living on bachelor. his own. Yeah, that is bachelor stuff right there. So, um, I mean, I, so because I hadn't heard the Dennehy stuff first, I, I didn't know he was married at all. And I really uh-huh. did not get this album for a long time until, like, I got down to some of the albums later. Like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, so Julie's left him by this point. I think so. I don't okay. think this is a very... I, well, first of all, I don't think this is a linear story because right. the stuff with, with D's, you know, uh-huh. and Perfecto. Uh-huh. Well, the Perfecto thing though. we'll get to. I wish... <laughs> I'll just say this right now. I picked another track as my favorite, which I like. We'll get to that actually next. But if I could, all of the Perfecto stuff would be my favorite. <laughs> But but yeah, um, this different strokes prefill still cracks yeah, me up. <laughs> yeah, um, that was beautiful. Um, again, if you're not a child of the '80s, it's lost on you. Um, but yeah, it, I gotta say, even though he's only on this and his main gig as a, is as a very successful jewelry designer, I like Joji Kojima as a rapper. Hey, I don't know what he's saying, but it's entertaining. Um, I he's suspect. Quoting- He's quoting some Kenny Dennis stuff, like, we're yeah. having a time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's later, yeah. But the little he does in English. Um, I suspect him and, and 
Serengeti are just probably buds. And and so he just was like, hey, want to be on the album? <laughs> yeah. I think it's probably something like that. Um, he's on the next track. Um, he's in the video for the next track. I don't know if yes. he's on the track itself. Um, next, on to track three, Shidoshi. Shidoshi. Um, by the way, Shidoshi is the title for a martial arts instructor. Yeah. Um, Kenny Dennis likes his, uh, his martial his arts. Movies. Yeah. Um, I love the chaos of this track. Um, like And how the right. vocal is very low at first and, and almost subliminal. Have you seen the video? Because this is the video I picked to post on their social media. I have once or twice. Uh, you know, when a, I first was into this, I'm like going, what, how do I find out more about this kind of thing? It was like this this rabbit hole that I just yeah. got sucked down. It's, it's Kenny Dennis at an intervention. Yes. Which lends so much to the song. Like the song is good in and of itself, but add that level in the video and it adds so much more. It, it just has this maddening feel from the chaotic, maddening feel from the start. Right. And this is where Kenny starts getting desperate. We we find they finally reveal really what the problem is. I mean, he kind of he briefly mentions that he's spending too much time with Georgie and Elgin. Which mm-hmm. and why would anyone spend time in Elgin is a question I can never answer. But um, that's the Chicago thing. I'm guessing like an hour away from here, and it's just uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. But okay. um, not, yeah, a part, the, not a place you want to go to. No. <laughs> the, the, uh, so the part. So he's actually partying and, and popping pills. Uh-huh. And here he is just pissing everyone off who are trying to get him back, trying to give him his awareness, you know? Yeah. And that chaos just builds. It kind of trails off in the middle. I love the track. You get these kind of dive bombs in the middle where it kind of empties out and slows a bit, which I love, even though the vocal is still fast and chaotic. Yeah. And this panic just builds in his voice. That's like when I heard um, Denny, I didn't get, the character i didn't get this style of rapping it's off time but it works right and he is ramming as much in as he can. on denny he, he does this other character about this emo kid who's just uh-huh. spoiled and another person you just want to fucking strangle kind of thing <laughs> so it's just he he loves these characters that are just not likable <laughs> And they're actually, you get a groove at the end, you know, and most oh, of it yeah. is just headlong chaos, but you get to do get this nice groove developing at the end. This is my favorite because I can't pick all of the Perfecto Saga. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I picked a favorite, honestly. It, it's, it, it this was is just difficult. A, it's a real head trip of an album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, on to track four, Win Big. Great samples, great groove. Um, this is the beginning of the Perfecto Saga. Right. Um, it's funny, just as he's getting to the heart of the story, what they finally reveal what's going on in his life that's, mm-hmm. you know, that's the crux of the story. Yeah. You're then switched it, off into this other thing. To this other story, which fits the character. He stuffs things down. He evades. Yes. He doesn't address his problems. Just as we're kind of starting to see the problem, we get this funny side story about this cheesy pop rap group we wanted to put together. Um, and have you seen Anders Holm? I looked up a picture. He's a comedian. Yeah, he's uh, one of the workaholics. Oh, okay. If you he's, haven't seen Anders Holm... He's not Adam <laughs> Devine. He's not the guy with the goofy hair. He's the other okay. guy. <laughs> I need to see that show one of these days. I haven't seen it. I've heard great things about it. But picture privileged white guy in your head. Yes. That's Anders Holm. Oh, I think they do a video as Perfecto, too, in, in like, the uh-huh. 90s outfit. It's fucking hilarious. I, I'm sure Andrew Holmes is a wonderful person. I know nothing about him. But visually, he is the poster child for privileged white guy. He could play a young Mike Pence, probably. <laughs> yes, very easily. Give him a wig and he's there. I mean, um, uh, young Mr. Drummond, young Mike Pence. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. But it's this this almost... It's. I mean, there's a track. It's a great sample, great groove. But it's just Anders Home talking about moving back to Chicago from LA and calling up Kenny. And it's it's really just a bit of exposition with music behind it. They're they're back and forth though. It's yeah. so fucking yeah, funny. Yeah. That, um, you know, and he wasn't doing uh, shit. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> I do a lot of things. Yeah. And and. It goes to and that. This is only an hour. These are all very short, like an hour, yeah, and, like a minute and change, rather. Yeah. Um, 
a B on track five perfecto. This continues the story where Anders visits him and Kenny tries to sell him on putting this group together, this nineties pop hip hop group in the vein of CNC music factory. Right. D's Again. comes back thinking he's going to do like another grim teaches, you know, gr- yeah. you know, gritty rap thing. Right. And instead he comes up with this, you know, so D's is Anders home. Yeah. Okay. I didn't get that connection. Good to know for later. Um, it's confusing because then I think, I think he's D, and then there's I think D's. I, I don't okay, know. It's yeah, very, it is very confusing. Um, but yeah, um, again, CNC Music Factory. You need to be our age to know them. <laughs> I mean, they, they were, were huge. They were huge for about ten minutes. Right. I was gonna say they were. It was so brief, but they were enormous. I mean, yeah. and and um, Kenny wants to call the group Perfecto. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that cracks me up, but yeah. yeah. Because at our age, you know that it goes back to late seventies, early eighties, the kind of mock Spanish. Oh yeah. Very You're right. With cool guys. You're right. <laughs> That's what it gets to. Um, on to track six on the road. Then, then we're continuing for, I think two more parts. Yeah. Two more parts yeah, of the yeah. story for now. Um, they go on tour playing rec centers all over Chicago. And uh yeah, you know, like the the oh which mall was it? Oh my god. Mm-hmm. It was the one that was right the the Lincolnwood Town Center. Okay. Uh, you know, it was right down the road from that for a while when I was in my own uh-huh. place. <laughs> Anytime I'd pet drive by it I'd be like, oh God. <laughs> touring malls. Yeah. Actually we get into the mall tour in the next one. But first off on the road, great synth bass riff toward the end. Uh, on to track seven at the mall at symbol um they start playing malls again 80s early 90s thing where you performed at a mall <laughs> it's funny this recurring theme about clothes because the latest ajai is largely about consumerism and kind okay. of how it's a religion of its own so <laughs> the fact that we're seeing this and you know he keeps talking about the air apostle that he's wearing and you yeah. know and the tour is paying for itself. They're having fun. Um, Anders or Dees apparently says they're a, ahead of the curve, in, ahead of the curve in Metro Mall music. <laughs> I was like, oh, of course, I keep thinking, like, did Tiffany do that? Like, again, if you Metro Mall music makes no sense unless you remember the late eighties, right? And Tiffany and all of that shit. Um, and this is where Kenny's ego starts getting out of control. He accosts a Wendy's employee, um, <laughs> tries to shake them down. Um, it, it's and, and then freaks out when he's told that he's not famous. Yeah, yeah. Um, nice synth, ba- nice another nice synth riff in there. Um, I kind of thought the band split up at this point, but not. They they come back later with more touring. Well, right. You kind of think that is there. Then this, you know, buddy guy. Song and on to the next. next track, Buddy Guy, not about the blues guitarist. Which I'm not really sure where this fits into the story. I mean... I don't think I, it does. I always thought it was because he was at like the point of, you know, calming down the argument or whatever. But mm-hmm. it's this weird thing. I think it might have something to do with him almost being an American gladiator himself. Okay, because I, the, I have no notes on the lyrics. Buddy Guy is just something he's calling someone whose name he doesn't know. Hey, Buddy, yes. guy. <laughs> calm down, it calm down, calm it, down. Which is very similar to a song he did with Sisyphus, actually, too. Obviously a reference to Buddy Guy, the guitarist, if you know who he is. Yeah. Um, nice, subtle reference. I I was I got a very big kick out of the fact that it's not actually about Buddy Guy. Right. Um, love the groove. Again, off-kilter, off-time vocals. He's brilliant at that. Um, nice bass riff between the verses. I have no notes on the lyrics or the meaning of the song because it just kind of went over my head. So yeah, the, he wanted to be an American gladiator, but he didn't so he could stay with Jules, but it sounded like Jules was going to support him. I'm trying to even remember which album. I think it was on 6E that that came up, finally. So like that's explained. Kenny Dennis is like Every Gen Xer when we were, tw- every Gen X guy when we were twelve. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which is disturbing, um, but it, given that he's fictional, it's hilarious. Um, on D track nine, Tanya T. 
Yeah, it was tough to take this song seriously because he tells it so comically. Yeah, um, like like the nice off time sample goes nicely with you know, Kenny's delivery, and it, it is really just initially more middle aged suburban angst. Um, and but the it's finally pushing his his you know his family away pretty much. And and but it's the lyrics are just oddly mundane about I did this then I did that. Yeah, well he's um, out of it though. You know, he, he's clearly not like understanding like what's going on or anything. Yeah. And then it introduces this guy friend named Tanya, who was beat up by his girlfriend. That's his brother. He... Oh, okay. I thought I didn't pick the, I didn't notice the brother part. Yeah, um, Tanya's his brother. Okay, his brother, who was beat up by his girlfriend, who's staying with Kenny for a while because he's trying to get his life back together. Um and his voice just flies into a rage at the end. Right, because they get pulled over by cops, and Tanya tells the cops where his pills are. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, I think that's the last time. I think it's the last time you really hear about Tanya in the whole series, so it's really okay. kind of like, whoa, you know, noticing Tanya, that. He was done with Tanya at this point, when, when yeah. Tanya got him busted. Yeah. Um, on to track 10, Damn D's. Makes a lot more sense now. Um, great kind of stumbling groove with this keyboard arpeggio that sounded very familiar. Again, I wish I could have fa- f- found out what the samples are. Um, great off kilter drums. I, it, this song just keeps playing with the timing, which I love. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is all vocals, about pushing away his friends with this great chaotic vocal that just keeps it from getting monotonous because this the sample does continue, but the, the vocal is just so chaotic. And this is where he just completely falls apart. Right. They never really say why the groom teachers broke up, but you get the feeling they just got tired of his shit. Uh-huh. And of course, since oh. he's the problem, you don't get to tell you fear what the problem is. I mean, you can I figure out he's the problem. I don't know if we've seen the end of Kenny, the Kenny Dennis saga yet, obviously, but I get the impression that's the moral is everybody got tired of his shit. Yeah. Um, on to track 11, Big Betty. This, this is, is one of my the, favorites. This is definitely the weirdest song. Out yeah. <laughs> Love the reverb on the drums. There's this vocal in the beginning about someone named Betty. Uh, did you give her a ring or something? Did you, know, did, are you, is she wearing his ring? Um, I'm guessing it's playing on the piano over there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing it's a sample from something. Yeah, he sampled a movie and looped it. And it, it like becomes, works in a rhythm. It becomes the backing track, this vote, this dialogue sample from a movie. Um, with this guitar over top of it, this slow strum right, the guitar, guitar. It's so that weird. reminds me a lot of Rumble by Link Ray. Similar oh, tone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and it, be- it just becomes the track that he's rapping over. And uh, and it's these these competing vocals, the sample and his vocal, that just are beautifully chaotic. Um, the drums get really chaotic in verse two, and then Joji comes back, which is just absurd. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happens here, though. Like no. something something happens where I think Jules gets into like a fight with someone. I I could be wrong. It just. Uh-huh. But it seems like everything is really going to shit here. Uh, yeah, which explains the next one. When Joe, you know, um, D's goes on. I, this is my pick for weakest. Um, it, it's just everything is in a different time. And this is where I was starting to get fatigued by track 12. Um, Kenny's just yelling at this point, and it's getting a bit old. Yeah, he's just, uh, I think he's just about to rock bottom here. Yeah. He's pretty close to it. Joji comes in with some Japanese, nice change of pace. Um, yeah. But yeah, this was my pick for weakest. Um, and then we return and to... And then, of course, that's why we come right back to back, Mr. Drummond. Just as, again, just as we're finding out the problem, it switches to Perfecto. Just <laughs> as he's hitting bottom, it comes back to Perfecto. Exactly. That's brilliant. <laughs> because it's Kenny evading. Yes. Love that. And uh, pace it works well too. It's like yeah. we've just we've gotten to the end of the story. Oh my god, and there's only so much of this downward spiral you can take. So to like swirl this other goofy ass story. Yes. Out As I said, I was getting fatigued, but 
the back to going back to the perfecto story saved it for me it completely cured the fatigue um on the track 13 mr drummond again beautiful different strokes reference that you don't get if you're not gen x um this is the continuation of perfecto um i guess they didn't split up because they're still on the road but anders uh, d's does one out of the band until they got this big talent show at the mall of america and the, he winds up in Minneapolis after his mm-hmm. breakdown later album. So it's okay. kind of weird. <laughs> I, I, I just needed this break. Um, and, and, you know, I loved the country guitar on this one. That was a really <laughs> nice change. And, and some guy yelling, they want you, man. <laughs> and the genius of this, probably <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite jokes of all time. Like, I got to give Serengeti or Anders, whoever came up with this, Insane credit for the Different Strokes prequel. Because <laughs> you know they'll fucking do it, too. You know oh, they yeah. would do it. <laughs> because, and for those who don't know Different Strokes, we come into it at, when Mr. Drummond is in his 50s or 60s, widowed for many years, and he adopts the two two black kids. Um, the prequel was going to be, you know, the story of their marriage and Kimberly as a child and all of this. Which has to end with the wife dying, which is fucking like, yes. who the hell would watch that? <laughs> which they don't mention, but yeah, if you bring it to your lo- to its logical conclusion, if you know different strokes, it ends with the death of the wife. And him being alone, you know, with his housekeeper yeah. and his daughter. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the, the original series was kind of hopeful because he was in this dark place at the beginning and it, it, you know, adopting these two kids kind of, you know refreshes his life right a little objectifying problematic these days of course but you know (laughs) um but yeah the whole they want you man of course is two levels because on one hand it's they want them for mall of america and i forget the name of the person that he's he goes on about as like you know i googled him years ago and it's like who the fuck anyway joe simpson that's right Right. Um, (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. sounds familiar but i can't place it and the other thing is Anders, you know, being wanted for this, you know, gig Different at the same time, cool. too. So it's like, they want you, man. That's when I had to Google Anders home because I didn't know who he was. And I'm like, okay, is he an actor or a comedian <laughs> yeah. or something who happens to be on this Kenny Dennis record? Um, track 14, Ain't No Joke. This is only 59 seconds long. It's just a little argument. Uh, yeah, you get a bunch where, of Grim Teach's background there because he mentions everybody yeah. in the band in the argument. And, and this is where Anders breaks up with Kenny. Um, yeah. He just flat out tells him the 90s pop hip hop shtick is bad and he wants to get back to regular rap like they used to do. Which is the next track. Next track, track 15, Get Back to Rap. Um, loved the uh, synth guitar, um, synth and guitar riff. Um, and and you know, it's Anders talking about how he wants to get back to rap, and it's 26 seconds. Yes. <laughs> Track 16, parkour. <laughs> Loved the, the sample on this. It's very oh, yeah. electronic. Oh, yeah, almost I love in, it. It almost goes industrial. Um, it's like, what, triple timed, probably? Yeah. Um, Anders moves back to L.A., but Mr. Drummond went to another actor. Um, some guy from a toothpaste commercial, which is a, a running gag with a lot of actors. You know, the tooth, the guy from the toothpaste commercial getting the getting the job. <laughs> um, Anders is crushed. He kind of gives up on acting, moves to Calabasas, gets into parkour. Uh, love the parkour gag because you know if you don't, you know if you know what parkour is and how big it was like ten years ago. Yeah, it's just again douchey white guy hobby. <laughs> And Anders plays the douchey white guy beautifully. Um, but of course, the only thing he's listening to when he's doing this. When he goes out on his runs is Perfecto. And he's working as a roofer. Um, it's just, he plays with the trope so beautifully. The parkour, the douchey white guy doing parkour, working as a roofer. I really um, hope he brings him back yeah. in an album sometime in the future. Not only do I need to see it. Not only do I need to hear more Kenny, more uh, Serengeti, I need to watch some of Anders Holmes' comedy. Um, <laughs> I love him on this record. Um, on to track 17, Lose Big. Um, my Spotify little, went a little weird. My mouse is dying. So for some reason, oh. it, it, it jumped to Tickled Pink, the last track at this point. I was very confused. <laughs> Until I went back, finally got it straight. This is, again, the, the, the completion of the, the um, Perfecto saga. 
Um, nice stuttering drums and a, a double time rap, which is great. We are, we're back to chaotic Kenny. And here yeah. is where he just needs cash and he's trying to recover after the end of Perfecto. He's he's looking to score still. Mm-hmm. Perfecto didn't work out. It wasn't his big, you know, big score. It was his big success. So he needs he needs money now. Um on to track eighteen, need clarity. This one goes back to to a reference at the end of um uh Shidoshi, all you need now is a little clarity. All you need now is a little therapy. Of course, you think um, about it. Lose big is, you know, the, yeah. the flip side to win big. Right. Um, great piano sample. It's got this great stumbling funk groove. It's like a and penis it, uh, piano. And it's just this cheesy, simplistic thing about Joji and Kenny having a great time. Trying to clear their minds. And getting some clarity. <laughs> it's just super simple. And it's kind of almost the climax of, of the story. Yeah. Because it's they, they finally give up. And like you don't know if he's gotten his life. He hasn't gotten his life together. No. He's just blowing off steam with his friend, kind of trying to forget everything. And then we get to the ending, track 19, Tickled Pink. Where it's loved, truly the rock bottom, you know? Loved the low anthemic kind of synth opening. It's that big hip-hop song. It, it's You know, it's that beginning of that low rumble that leads to that big you know triumphant hip hop song but it never builds to that it just continues that low rumble at the beginning and the entire 6e album is a lot like this this song okay love the drums when they finally do come in um he kind i get the impression it's about him just wanting to get back to his old life yeah well he i think he shaves his mustache uh-huh and yeah he's trying to get a grip you know He's, somehow a lot of it is just reminiscing about what it used what he used to have what what he's lost you know yeah love the, the low harmonica that comes in at the end it's just this low jailhouse harmonica that just fits perfectly um one makes me wonder now that i'm saying jailhouse because that's the cliche is a harmonica in jail yeah did kenny end up in jail i don't think so okay I, I mean, they never really talk about anything like that. So I'm I think, just basing that on a harmonica. I don't know how he sobers up, honestly, but I mean, he, or I think maybe the events of the next album are really what sobered him up more than anything else. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know. Favorite track I'd probably take, I'd probably take off and on. Okay. And then maybe weakest. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably go with uh, D's Goes On. Yeah, it's hard to pick a weakest. It's just that was the point where I was getting fatigued and a little tired of Kenny screaming. Well, it is kind of like this this flat of these guys just still trying to go all night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they do mention like he like will disappear from them for days, you know, like leave mm-hmm. leave on a Monday night, come back on a Thursday. Uh-huh. He's not sure what day of the week it really is. He forgets like to pick up the birthday cake for like a little cousin or something like that. Uh-huh. Like all sorts of stories in the album. And you were going to get into more of the, how, where the saga goes from there. But I just, before then, I just love how he takes this character who I despise <laughs> and makes him interesting. Makes me want to know about him. Right. He's not a likable character. Actually. He, well, when you compare him to a Jai, he's actually a bit more likable than a Jai, but he's okay. still not likable. Well, I kind of like him on Dennehy. Yeah. He's a nice, he's a decent guy. I get him. He's not someone I would ever hang with, but I get him. He's all right. But then where he goes to is just despicable. And then yeah, there's the whole obsessive uh, component to him because he he'll you know rant about Shaq for for years and who knows how right. long you know that was. And right. like the next album in the saga is totally from uh, Jules' point of view. Oh where wow. It turns out Jules was a aspiring pop singer herself, but she'd given it up for Kenny, and now she's going for her own pop music career. Nice. So nice. all the songs are her Jules singing. Not and the only time you hear Kenny Dennis is him leaving voicemail messages to everybody on this album, and everybody ignoring his calls. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's just Kenny Dennis ranting on voicemail. Mm-hmm. Answering machines, including Shaq. 
<laughs> wow. But the, then it something happens and they don't really they're not really clear, but someone obviously dies at the end of the album and Kenny Dennis is just distraught and there's even like the seven, you know, phases at the end. Uh-huh. And, and then I think it's um they they hint at it. I think it's Jewel's sister sings like a memorial song because Jules had died. And then Oh man. And then after and of course he was trying to get back with her too throughout the album and, and you know get his life back together. And that's when he finally has his breakdown and that's six E, which he's <laughs> he's in this that which they don't explain what that is until the uh, until the next album actually. They don't explain uh-huh. any of that. It's just him like regretting everything it's like one like i said it's like tickled pink but it's just this whole album of regret and wishing he had been you know a better guy and and being there with jules and i'm then, really good and then ajai they explain 6e was his apartment number he oh. moved to, that he moved to minneapolis and was just living alone and not in contact with anyone and uh one day Ajay's a female character no, Ajay is this completely new character that just gets introduced. Oh, he's okay. Kind of, he's part of the game. He's tangential to Karen Dennis. Right. It's like a double EP. The first half is about Ajay, uh, and this he's this sneaker guy, sneakerhead foodie guy that's you know kind of fancy, but he's not in a very happy marriage, and accidentally, a pair of his shoes gets delivered to Kenny Dennis. Okay. And it converts Kenny Dennis into a sneakerhead. <laughs> so the second half of the EP is Kenny Dennis going on about drops and collaborations and O'Doul's is brought in, of course. Uh, there's a song, they, they sing an O'Doul song uh, on Jules' oh uh, Butterflies, too. It's really fucking funny. <laughs> First off, <clears throat> two points. I want to see the, the Kenny Dennis movie. I think he is working on something like that. <laughs> I hope to God he does that. I, I would. So. <laughs> There's something awesome. called Kenny versus the Dark Web too, which I'm not even sure I entirely understand what that's about. <laughs> also, you compared him to um, Andy Kaufman earlier, and yes. I'm absolutely seeing that now. Mm-hmm. Like Kaufman was more transgressive, but he had, Kaufman had a brilliant way of riding this line between comedy and tragedy. Right. And and he's doing the same with Kenny Dennis. Again, Kaufman liked to piss people off more than Serengeti does. Um, yeah, yeah. But but I, that that mix of comedy and tragedy that they both that Ken, Ken Serengeti is pulling off is so Kaufman. Like people want to would want to say Bowie, but come on, Bowie never got this far into a character. No. Uh, Bowie's characters were just wigs and and outfits yeah. and and you know a few references here and there, right this he he's gone on instagram live before a jai was released and start talking about like things he could sell or trade or whatever and we're all like have you fucking lost your mind kind of commenting in there like what is this and then a jai comes out and it's pretty much a track that on both sides that each of them do when they're getting into this trying to get into drops and trying to get verified and all of these oh, crazy man. consumers of things, but none of us knew what he was doing. <laughs> oh shit, that's genius! Wow, I'm like I first listened, I'm like that motherfucker. <laughs> so, before... would you recommend it? Oh well, okay. One more point before we get to recommend. Well, I'll sure. just say that we both absolutely recommend it. Yeah, it's thoroughly bizarre, unlike anything ever before. I mean, it lost me a little bit on D's goes on, but it just brought me right back. This 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 shit is genius. Um, I, I had no idea if you were going to see it or not. I was kind of like, maybe he will, maybe he won't. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it's genius. And now knowing more about the story, I went into this before I listened to this today. I all I knew was Dennehy, and I thought, okay, this is a kind. It's kind of growing on me, but it's really just a, a Beastie Boys bite. You know, I'm not really that into it. The album I loved, it grew on me more and more, and now knowing the whole story, it's just fucking genius. Right. This is where it takes the dark turn 
and uh, it gets uh, it gets darker at six e, and then uh, I don't listen to Jules all that much because I mean. <laughs> It's, it Jules is like the wall almost with like uh-huh. Mariah Carey singing the songs instead of David Kilmore. Oh god. <laughs> it's it's pretty yeah. much that's what it is. Absurd, but also kind of fascinating. It's, um, it's fucking nuts. But yeah, oh this is just, I need to hear more. Not only not just of Kenny Dennis, but of Serengeti in general. I guess I've that I tried heard- to arrange the entire saga on a playlist on Spotify together. Uh-huh. I kind of thought six E was the end. So when he came in, came in with the chai, I was like, wait, what? Is this going to go on more? It's a good thing you can now like move things around on a Spotify playlist. You used to not be able to do that. You used to have to remove everything and put things in the middle. Now you can like drag and drop things into the middle of this playlist. If you're it's using the thing. desktop, you can, yeah. If you're using this desktop app, yeah. I've never tried yeah. it anywhere else. Um, it's a good thing you can do that because... I feel like you're going to be moving things around in that playlist a lot because he's going to be coming out with things that are all all over that story. It's not going to be chronological at all. Well, right. I mean, he there's other singles out there, like with, with the rap battle with Lee. And um, there, there's also, he just came out with a single that's a prequel to this from like the late 70s with a young Kenny Dennis at the infamous Death of Disco Night, which is a, a Chicago legend that made national news okay. where they did the they they blew up the disco records in the outfield oh, yeah, yeah. I about that. Yeah, yeah. And, and it turned into a goddamn riot <laughs> yeah how, so that, that was a white Sox game Kenny Dennis? Cause uh, i think he like just, i wonder well i think what's because that was late 70s right that's right. Disco was late 70s. i think in a jai he turned 60 oh okay he's quite a bit older all right yes yes wow I, see, I, I thought he was like our age, given all the references. Um, no, wow. he's a bit older. Okay. Huh. A lot older. Wow. Um, <laughs> Super older. Yeah. Well, I, not that. I, I, I complete a year, a trip around the sun in a couple, in a week or so. <laughs> yeah, that's part, that's part, to explain, that's part of why we take two weeks off in July. A, it's um, Independence Day here in the U.S. And also two days after that is your birthday. There was one year where, like, they were in different weeks. Like, you know, um, it was like uh, Independence Day fell on a Sunday. And so your birthday was like on the next Tuesday. So we did two, both weeks off and it just kind of became a thing. Um, I so, it. yeah, but no he turned he turned 60. Bear in mind, that's like a little over a decade away for both of us. Yes. Yes. You know, I, I I mentioned last week. Um, you referred to yourself as an older guy. I'm like, are we older? <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, that's it for Kenny Dennis three. Uh, until three weeks from now, when we'll be reviewing the self titled debut album from Fake Names. Um, Fake Names is a super group. Um, they're the Epitaph website calls them a punk rock supergroup. Technically, yes, it's Brian Baker from Bad Religion and Minor Threat. Um, Michael Hampton from SOA. Um, Johnny, I can't think of this. I want to say Johnny Stein. I'm not sure. The bass player is from Girls Against Boys. The vocalist, whose name escapes me, is from The Refused. All, they all have punk pedigrees. Um, the, the music on the album isn't really punk. It's more like alternative, heavy alternative. I get a strong drama on a vibe from it. All right. So that'll what be good. It it's new just this year. Came out just this year? year. Oh, cool. All right. Um, yeah, Bad Religion went on a little break and, you know, um, because of, I think largely because of, well, no, it had to be for, before COVID when they recorded it. Um, but I think they were just on a break from touring schedule. And so he, he and Hampton got together, wrote a bunch of songs and put a thing together. <laughs> um, <laughs> So looking forward to that in a few weeks. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. are.